Season 4, Episode 4, Ghosts and Gaia Rings. Okay, Fred, what's next on our list? A petition from the Hysterical Society. They insist we remove all safety signage from the historic Zap Fountain. You heard Venus. No deal. Were we expecting somebody? There is a maintenance van in the driveway. Good morning. Bobby Carnuckle, you elsewhere technician. We got reports of an outage in the area. I'm here to see why your abacus stopped communicating with the elsewhere council. Hey, seriously? That's fantastic! Uh, because we actually already know what's wrong with our abacus. Our graduation bead has gone missing! Yeah, so if, if you can fix it or tell the council or whatever you gotta do, that would be amazing! Well, let's see what your problem is. Oh, well, like I was saying, it's the bead, you know? Like, you can see it's missing. Uh, it's right, right there on the table. Uh, don't you worry, ma'am. I got this great big old manual here that's gonna tell us exactly what's wrong with your abacus. A missing bead, perhaps. Don't see many of these anymore. This is the old model abacus. They got much better abacus nowadays. We do not choose the abacus. They are given to us. Anywho, first thing we gotta do is restart your abacus. No, we don't need to restart. We already know it's this stupid bead. You can see it's missing. The man who stole it admitted to it in his diary. Okay, going into config mode. We're gonna see what's wrong with this abacus. Ah, mein Gott. Says here, you're trying to connect to the Elsewhere Council, which is actually correct. That's what you wanna be doing. Mr. Carnacle, sir, we know the abacus is missing a bead. That's why no one graduates in our town. You know what? I'm gonna write this down for you. Here. Our bead is missing, okay? We cannot graduate, please fix. There, now get back in your van and drive home and please take this directly to the Elsewhere Council and may God bless your soul. Okay, what you need to do is go ahead and restart your abacus. Y'all in cattle holler. Okay, the Abacus of Fate has restarted, and it's still missing a bead. Can I be done now? Why don't you hop on up for me? I'm gonna run a diagnostic. See if we can't figure out what is happening with this Abacus. If only there were some kind of clue in the shape of a bead. <laughs> sure would make my job a lot easier. Speaking of beads, like the one missing from our Abacus, did we hear anything from Chip and his near-dwellers? Ah! You have beat me to the punching, for I wish to share that our friends have met the real council agent, who will be pleased to read the cipher from Carol Cadaver's Pizza. Okay, finally! We might actually learn where Roostifer sold our graduation bead. Oh, but how are we going to share the cipher with this council agent? It is our good fortune that Mr. Thorne had an evolution. He now offers secure and convenient telefax communication. Nice! Let's get that cipher over to Mr. Thorne, and while I'm thinking about it, can you print up an invoice for all my stolen breakfast bars? It will be done. Okay, 
finished your level three diagnostic. And we're missing one graduation bead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, he's supposed to have a graduation bead on there. Hey, maybe you should be a level three technician. Maybe so. Yeah, without that bead, ain't nobody's soul going nowhere. We know all of this. Well, did you know Colonel Holler is responsible for causing the event? Y'all know about the event, don't you? Yeah, we heard about the event, but the name's a little vague, you know? We heard there was an enormous explosion in the Nerdwell. Oh yeah. See, what happened was, every town has one of these abacus, right? And they're all supposed to send a ping to the Elsewhere Council, all the time. Ping, ping, ping. Okay, sure. Well, your abacus is missing a bead, so not only are your graduations broken, but you're sending a divide by zero error to the council nonstop, day in and day out. Hmm, a problem perhaps. Yeah, it's a problem, cause what happens is, those errors start to build up in the council buffer. Like on the printer. Yep, like on a printer. Say, maybe you should be a level three technician. Okay, and the buffer got so full that it caused an explosion. Boy, you folks are smart. That is exactly what happened. Just like that, all the communication went out from all the towns in the there dwell. Caused all kind of problems you can't even imagine. That's why it's level three technicians out driving around to the towns to check on y'all's abacus. Ugh! What have you done, Bat Singlers? Say, if you guys know where that bead's at, that sure would help me out. We're working on it. Activate fax machine. Okay, I just need to wrap up here. Uh, Y'all want to pay with a zap ring or charge card? Seriously? It's an extra fee if you're going to use a card. Time. I know my rumpus is too slow. I lose the musical chair, baby. It is Albert Goss who win again. My rumpus was exceedingly fast. Uh, let's play again. Yeah, let's play it again. So sorry to studio audience, but it's time for Fibula must go. No. Now you can't play with us. This is the last episode of Real Housewife of Elsewhere Council Custody until after trial of Fibula for some naughty no-nos a long time ago that nobody remember. You're charged with crimes related to the music box murders. Okay, thank you, eyeball policeman. Now Fibula will say goodbye to each one of you in the audience. Goodbye to you who are monster with radio. I love you, baby. You are a true fan of Fibula. And goodbye to all glamorous pine cone in the cabin, and even squirrel who tells squirrelish lies about Fibula. Goodbye to Muley Julie in window. <laughs> what about Buddy and Susan? Goodbye to super fan doll babies. Yay! <laughs> and boyfriend, Divius, who is real boyfriend. Don't forget Chip Clearly. And Cheap, and Albre Ghost, and even Twitch Eyeball who take me to jail. Goodbye, Goodbye Fibula. Bye. 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 Good luck. We stuff. wish you well. While I am being movie star on trial, stay tuned for rerun, which includes special episode when Fibula slapped Moss wig off of Applehead doll. Yay! Okay, love you. Bye-bye, babies. And we're out. Good show, Fibula. I wish you luck, Fibula. I hope the council's judgment is fair and you find great reward in your future service. Thank you, baby. You've done well, Von Snap. I'll make sure your record reflects good behavior and an interest in telecommunications. That said, my colleague will arrive shortly to escort you to your trial in the Oculo Dome. Okay, babies, who will help Fibula do fabulous makeup? We, we will! Did it.
Okay, remember, eyebrow is sister, not twin. We know! And just for the record, I don't think I should be paying for any abacus report because we already know it's missing a bead. Well, might have run your card a couple extra times on accident. Uh. Knock, knock. Get your local law enforcement. Come by for a visit. And surprise! He come with Belfry Batsinger. Long time and future caretaker. Uh. I will assume Batsinger is exercising some new privileges. Yeah, we doing one of his constitutionals so he can get them steps in. Lavender hand weights, Batsinger? Really? I told him to get them two pound weights, but he gotta show off with them fives. Gotta keep up with that muscle tone, Sheriff. Must stay real good for doing lunges. Like this right here. Do not do lunges in my office. Ain't my fault you're working out of some old closet. You should have set up your headquarters at a proper location, like the mausoleum. Plenty of room for lunges at the mausoleum, plus bowling, square dancing. Uh oh. Watch the abacus! Be careful, bad singer. What is happening to the abacus? Your fitness happy friend just released exactly 13 dozen guardian ghosts from the abacus of fate. God dang it, I knew this was gonna happen. That's on y'all for leaving out your toys. The abacus should be under lock and key. Everybody knows that. Buddy Cornuckle, what are we dealing with? Manuel says the ghosts are riled for a number of reasons, especially when a beat is removed or they are close to saboteurs and or bad actors. Boy, they got your number, Belfer Bassinger. You a bad actor. The ghosts will not cross water, so they probably gonna set up shop all over town. <laughs> and there they go. They'll be swarming all over the townspeople now. I will entertain suggestions. Gotta catch them all, caretaker. Got some right here for you. But a half dozen of these ornery devils. Get down. Well, that's cause you keep Yo. swapping at them, Belfry. Just leave them be. You're aggravating them. They're trying to bite me because I'm so sweet. You can't get come bit on. by no come bee on. ghost. Now, come on. Leave, leave me be We're now. going right back to jail. Get. I'm going to tell Yo. Deputy to Terry everything you've done. No, but I gotta get my steps in now. No, you ain't. No, you 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 done enough. You done enough. Come on now. Come on now. Excuse me, but there are now several ghosts running amok in my boutique. Sorry, Roddy, that's us. Uh, Batsinger, actually, but we'll take care of it. Mm-hmm. Caretaker Zinkenblamp. I'm also detecting a heap of these ghosts at a nearby business. All right, Bobby Carnuckle, let's catch some ghosts. <laughs> Mr. Thorne, I see you've grown new branches of technology. Greetings, Albert Ghost and Chip, clearly. Would you like to use my business center services? We're picking up a fax from the office of Benita Von Wingenkamp. Please deposit 75 acorns. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Gonna need a bigger acorn apron. Okay, right in the bird bucket. Are you well, Albert Ghost? Pretty good. We're anxious about the fate of our souls, but the town found some promising clues. And we expect to reach the Elsewhere Council tomorrow. That is well. You may retrieve your message from the hall. Let's see. A lot of frisbees in here. There we go. What does it say? It's a clue to find our graduation bead, but it's all in council code. Can you read this code? Not a word. We're going to show this to Agent Twitch. He should be able to help. We're going to be heroes, Mr. Thorne. Good luck.
Well, that's peculiar. The door to Fabulous Cabin is ajar. But she would never let us open the door, even when it's like a million degrees in there. She always said, It's, it's tacky. tacky. Yeah. I guess she's really gone now. Agent, Agent Twitch. Twitch! Thank the Grand Supreme. You fellows are a sight for sore eye. What happened here? Who tied you up with that old jump rope? Buddy? Susan? Where are you? Uh, why are you picking on us? Yeah, it was the two big bad eyeball guy and girl. We had a run-in with former Agent Squint and Sty. They found us, those creeps! You better catch us up while we work on these knots. At 1500, my colleague arrived on schedule to escort prisoner Von Snap to her trial, at which point Buddy and Susan attached to her leg and refused to let go. My colleague eventually pried them loose, but not without considerable kicking and screaming. We got him pretty good. How did our rogue agents get inside? They posed as workaday pine cone salesmen. I entered the door to turn them away, but upon seeing through their fake mustaches, I ascertained their foul intentions and a struggle ensued. At some point, Agent Stye produced an illegal nihilizer, and the other one tied me up. We pretended asleep. But why didn't you untie Agent Twitch when the bad guys left? Excuse me, those are double knots, mister. Yeah, we got doll fingers. We couldn't do it. Fair enough. I assumed that Squint and Sty were trying to detain me and Chip, but we weren't here, so what did they want? Uh, that's the worst of it. They stole my Indigo Gyre ring. Oh, that villain! Dear. I love that ring! As do I. It's the only way to enter the Oculodome. And what will the agents do with this kind of access? Can't say for sure. They were talking about freeing their allies from prison, but they're probably still deciding what they can get away with. I don't think they expected to find me here. Or my ring. Them two are the worst eyeballs i ever seen! I agree. This is not Catawambus. But ring or no ring, we can still get to the council and tell them all the stuff that's going on, right? Perhaps. It will be difficult without my ring. But it, it wasn't, wasn't fair. fair! They stole it from you! Let's do this! Okay, that's the last knot. Nice! Good work, Ghost. Is that your cipher? It is indeed. Let's see what happened to your graduation bead. Well, pull up a chair, brother. You're just in time for Pastor Munch brunch with Pastor Munch. We was talking about something special we're doing while we wait for our coffee. What is it we're doing, friends? Patience! That's right, Gary Gristle. We're practicing patience. Remember how we waited for a table? That was also patience. And how about these ghosts keep raising their little voices so loud we can't hardly talk, but we love them anyway, because they can't help it, and also they, they are brothers in order up one scary merry latte. That's for me. I've been patient. Here I come to get it. Oh, I love to get my coffee. Love to get it. Too slow. Yeah, too slow. A ghost got your coffee again. Oh, no. Can I have another? The pastor wants another coffee after we already made a coffee. Well, how about I pay for another one? Now we're making two coffees instead. Hey, look, Chuck. We're on the news. This just in. Brace yourselves. Several ghosts have appeared in Colonel Holler. That's right. These busybody boo makers are bustling about town in a bid to bother that's very bad for business. They've been spotted at the boutique, Bloopy's West, and Black Cauldron Coffee. Oh, here comes the interview. Ooh, la dee da. Talk to me because the movie's done. Yeah, there's some ghosts. What about it? 
Are they doing something interesting? Oh, that information's gonna cost you. Yeah, we done good. Nice job. Hey, fellas. I don't suppose you've seen any ghosts around here lately. Bonita, there's ghosts right here in the diner. Don't you see them? Yeah, there's ghosts in here, madam. Yep, gonna be ghosts in a Halloween town. I don't know why there's a news story about it, but... They're scaring me. And they drink all my coffee, so they're real hyper. And I can't feed them to the counter when my coffee's ready. And it's just terrible. Do not worry, Pastor Munch, for we have brought Bobby Cornuckle, a level three service technician. Ooh, level three, level three technician. technician. Such a high Bobby, level. Ah. Don't you worry. Bobby Carnuckle has set the abacus to trap mode. I'm gonna hold it up like this right here and zoop them bad boy ghosts right back into the abacus. Hurry, please. Engage. Woo! It's a ghost will return to the abacus. Hey, Bobby Carnuckle. Get in my abacus. Don't think it's Bobby Diner. Like they slippery. Like Bobby Carnuckle. Nice work, Bobby Carnuckle. Level three technician moves. Yeah, you zapped them real good. Order up one latte da latte. Yay, I'm so blessed. Up. That's for Bobby Carnuckle. Sheriff, I know you ain't gonna leave me in here with all these ghosts now. They owe me like a suit on Sunday. Uh-uh, Belfry. You should have thought about that when you were showing out trying to embarrass me in front of my friends. Now. now you just wait in there and think about what you've done. Somebody be along and take care of them ghosts after a while. What they drink in my soda pop? They do like his soda pop. Them ghosts try to drink my soda pop, I'll pop them right in the kisser. You tell him, Deputy Terry. Hey, Deputy Terry, I tell you we find out about that old graduation bean. Nuh-uh, you did not! Yep, old Albert Ghost and Chipperoo told us right where Belfry's daddy tried to sell it off all them years ago. You talk about the scene of the crime, Sheriff! Exactly, our dead drop location. Well, where is it? Well, now, where do you think it is? Uh, toilet! Nope. He threw that bait in the pond, and some old fish gobbled it up on his fish guts. So that's what I said, and then I was like, you know, Chester drawers, maybe. And then Benita said, stop guessing, Sheriff. It's in Belfry's dang old treehouse. You know, she tell me, stop guessing. Treehouse? Yep, old rooster for put it in them eaves or something, like they playing double old secret agent. Might still be there, might not. Somebody could have towed it off as part of that dirty deal we come to learn about in that diary. We gonna see what's in that treehouse after we done with all them abacus ghosts. Well, that's good. Hey, you know what I like is when a treehouse got one of them rope swings. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it got a rope swing, but I'm a trapdoor man myself. What you gonna do with a trapdoor, Sheriff? For your enemies, Terry. They fall right out the bottom, then they sit and duck for some pine cone bombs. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I like a good treehouse now. Um, uh, what was we talking about? Venus, we are living on the edge here. Well, what I mean is that I'm going to hopefully sit in my office long enough to change shoes and eat lunch and... I am really running the risk that I'm about to get bombarded with well-meaning but completely bonkers towns monsters trying to talk to me about the bead ghosts. <laughs> yes, I will put on my fuzzy rat slippers for a minute. That's a great idea. Do you want a blood worm? Here, Benita, your burrito bowl. Yes, thank you so much. I hope I have enough time to eat this. Do not worry, Madam Caretaker. We have set up a rather ingenious phone tree using a virtual number. Calls about the bead ghost will ring to the boutique counter first. 
then to Minerva's phone, then to my phone, then to the sheriff's phone. You will not be disturbed. You are terrifyingly competent, Count Vangula. I aim to terrorize. Hmm. It seems like it's working pretty well. Uh, who is this? Sheriff, hey, what's up? Uh, well, Benita, I uh, hate to be the bearer of bad news. You know, don't shoot the messenger and uh, all that. Uh, hate to rain on your parade. I don't want to cause you no strife or nothing. Sheriff, what happened? Well, now, I don't want to worry you, but I got to tell you, Belfer Batsinger ain't in his jail cell. He ain't. What happened? Well, now, you know, this is going to sound ridiculous. I can't even believe I'm saying this, but we uh left the window open. Uh, it got pretty loud in here because the rain toss had all this hat-making glue and needed some fresh air, you know. We want to keep an eye on him strictly. My bad, ma'am. Okay, well, you know, um, I guess go look for him. This might not be a villainous scheme. Although, who knows? It probably is, but maybe isn't. Hey, Sheriff, I'll call you back in a little bit. I think Chip is calling me. This might be important. Okay, now, we gonna find him. You know, I, I promise you, I promise you that. Okay, bye! Oh. Chip, did you make my desk plant ring with a recording of Hats Off to You by Curtis Creighton? Oh, so it worked then. Mr. Thorne lets you pick a custom ringtone now. It only cost me 32 acorns. Is that why you called me for me to hear your ringtone? Mostly. Ugh. Attention candy machines. It's your best friend pumpkin on the intercom. It's time for your top of the hour safety checks. Wow, pumpkin. You know, I've not been here in a while. You really got this candy factory popping. Popping like pop rocks. You must be awfully pleased, pumpkin. I told y'all I'm business. Now before we proceed, put these on. Ooh, love a good hairnet. And paper shoe covers with the factory logo printed on them. How very clever. I know a guy. Uh, Pumpkin, we'll need one more hairnet and a set of shoe covers for our ghost technician. He is here to trap your wayward ghosts back into the abacus of fate. Bobby Carnuckle is detecting the presence of 31 big ghosts in the vicinity. Well, his feels shoes, Bubba Kentucky, but you ain't got no hair, so you ain't got to wear a hairnet. You don't have hair, but you're still wearing one, Pumpkin. Sometimes a leaf falls off my stem. Pumpkin, can you show us where the ghosts are? This way. Pumpkin believe ghosts are out of control. They've taken over the candy center machine and they're putting raisins in everything. Ew, they're putting raisins in everything? Blast them, Bobby. Stand back, citizens. Nine ghosts in the can. Hang on, y'all. We gotta try some of this ghost candy. What new concoction is this? It's chocolate frogs, but they only have raisins inside. Hey, this is pretty good. It's like the raisins are its guts. Okay, but a safety inspector, those ghosts were not operating the equipment according to standard procedure. Well, that's why y'all did a good job telling Pumpkin all about it. Thank you, Pumpkin. We feel valued as employees. <laughs> Bobby Carnuckle detects a swarm of 15 ghosts about 50 meters southwest of here. Oh no! They've gotten into the taffy machine! They're changing the formula! Oh no! They are forcing the machine to turn out vile peanut butter chews in orange and black wrappers! It's old people candy! Get them, Bobby! Time to unleash a few tricks on these treats! Phew! Looks like that might be all of them. Only six ghosts remain at large. If Bobby Carnuckle doesn't see any more in the vicinity, Candy Factory is cleared. Yay! Yay. All right! Good job, Bobby Kentucky. Yeah, Good job, everybody. 
Looks like we might be really close to putting these bead ghosts to bed. Well, y'all get good. Here, I'm gonna give y'all a goodie bag of ghost candy to take home. You're very generous, Pumpkin. I thank you. Thanks, Pumpkin, but I'm good. I don't want any peanut butter kisses. Okay, then, I'm gonna give you some pumpkin kisses. Pumpkin kisses? Mwah. Mwah. Okay. Only six ghosts Mwah. remain to be collected. Mwah. Right behind you. Here it is, Harrow Hill. The very trees look sinister. Shall we enter the overgrown wooded path? Is this where we can find the ruins of the old Batsinger homestead? Yeah, I think so. Listen. It's coming from that ramshackle little cabin perched in the tree. Yeah, this has got to be where Batsinger ran off to. There were six ghosts that wouldn't leave him alone, and Bobby confirmed that there were six ghosts in this area. Shall we climb this old rope ladder? Please let me go first, Benita. I will test its safety. Thanks, Fred. Uh, mm, not sure about this. So we are in the exact place where the decrypted diary clue said the bead exchange was going to take place all those years ago. Uh, okay, a lot of sway in here. Uh, between Roostifer and that crooked elsewhere council creep. Belfry's old treehouse. And here is the bat himself. Hello, Belfry bat singer. Oh, look. It's the caretaker and a pet vampire. Y'all gone now. I may be up off the ground in this old treehouse, but you never seen a man down so low. Mm-hmm. So what brings you here, Belfry? Are you following in your father's footsteps? Or did you just want to get in some good tire swing time and this is the only place that you could think of that had one? Can't a man do some soul searching at the site of a family betrayal? Confound these apparitions! What happened to y'all's old ghostbuster? Conversational skills of these spirits leave much to be desired. Bobby Carnuckle is eating lunch in the car. He is going to meet up with us after he finishes his tuna salad kit. So, Belfry, I'm not even going to freak out on you for being out of your cell, because even I, who sees the worst in you, aka you most of the time, can tell that you're actually feeling vulnerable and appear to be deep in thought. Yes, I heard about your long-distance bow chip clearly's little telegram. About this being the place where my daddy met up with that council agent. Sell that bead off the abacus of fate. Chip is not my bow, but yes. It's kind of poetic, isn't it? This treehouse, a symbol of your childhood innocence, being the place where- Creeping crime in Miss Von Wangenkamp. Don't you start soliloquizing like you holding a skull in your hand at the globe. Sometimes things in your life, they just happen. Ain't no symbolism. Now leave me with my ghost. Mm. Yes, Benita, I heard it as well. That statement too was rife with symbolism. Well, Belfry, if you don't want to talk to us about your unresolved feelings about your cruddy father, you don't have to. But excuse me, I need to look behind this rafter. The dead drop location. Is there anything there? Yeah, here's the cigar box. Feels empty, though. Not surprising. Well, that sucks, but... There is a letter. This, this is, is a message, message to, to my, my son, son Belfry. Belfry. I know you'll find this because you are a shrewd and ruthless young man, just as I was. Son, while I am on Earth taking in stereo opticons of horse races with a parade of buxom Earth women, barf, you will be ready to rule this town as I once did. I know you've got it in you. You are a bat singer through and through. Hmm. My daddy, slimy as a prank toad, slithering down the neck of a church dress. Yeah, I was gonna say, he sounds great. So the beat was delivered to the corrupt council agent. And once again, it evades our grasp. Yeah, for now, I guess it does.
Okay, well, I guess let's try one more time, Bobby. Brace yourself for a one-two Bobby Carnuckle blast. Good night, Carnuckle. You trying to fry me up like a pork chop with that thing? His fur is standing on end, and yet the ghosts remain. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call this. Belfry, you are officially haunted. Those ghosts are not going back into the abacus. The ghost anger is being stirred awake. I believe the only thing that can placate them now is restoring the missing bead. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too, Count Fangula. We have got to find that bead. I'm not sure where or how we will find it, but in the meantime, old Batsinger here is going to have some ghostly roommates with him back at the jail. Well, I suppose a body could get used to this unholy shrieking and wailing. I might prefer it to the sound of my own unhappy thoughts. You sound like you have a lot on your mind, Belfry. And even though I am dying to, I am not going to start talking about how it's almost like these ghosts are charging you with the responsibility of fixing your father's mistakes. Miss Von Wingenkamp, I dare say those very thoughts have blackened my mind of late. You know, Belfry, we do not have to succumb to the curses that have plagued our ancestors. Sometimes we must decide to end the madness, even if it is very difficult to do so. I own you might be onto something, Fred Fangula. I always thought I was a mighty general, making my own sojourn in an unknown land. But it looks like I've just been reading from my daddy's tired old playbook. For the millionth time, Belfer Batsinger, I arrest thee. Come on down from that treehouse or face the wrath of my slime pistols. Sheriff, Terry, it's okay. He'll come down. Nope. I'm already climbing up this here rope ladder. Buffer Batsinger, you better. Ow. Ow. Oh, ow. Come on. Sheriff, please. No megaphone inside the treehouse. All right, all right. Well, thanks for texting me, Bonita, and uh, sorry again about letting this one get loose. It's really okay, Sheriff. I think it was kind of important that he come all the way up here. Are you ready to go back, Belfry? If I must. But what jail cell could imprison me more thoroughly than the relentless howls of these persistent ghosts? See, Benita, you ain't the only one that can torture a metaphor. Touché, Mr. Batsinger. back with your ne'er-do-well weather report. Do I sense some menacing winds? Thank you, Squirrel. I will make sure to carry an umbrella that also repels toad rain. This is Albert Ghost, filling in for Phoebe Levon Snap while she's on trial. This portion of today's program is brought to you by Mr. Thorne's Trelophone Station, located in Big Rock Forest. Mention this broadcast to get your first call for only five acorns. And now it's time for a book review session. Ah, we can't have rogue electronics wrecking Albert's broadcast. It's coming from that computer. I can turn it off. Okay, let's use our kitten holding hands to touch the computer. I'm taking this outside. And now I'm going to ask my doll friends, Buddy and Susan, to join me here in the studio for story time. That's our cue. What story are we going to tell, Mr. Ghost? Well, I thought we would tell everybody the story of our adventure and why the people of Kirtle Holler need help from the people of the ne'er-do-well. Boring! Tell about how Julie got eyelashes. We'll tell that part, too. What is this pop-up? Video call from DVS. Okay. Except. <laughs> Darling. Are you Fibula's Ethernet boyfriend? She's not here. She's having her trial now. Were you worried? I can imagine. 
but she's with the Elsewhere Council now. They're deciding her fate. Wait a minute. DVS, you're Donald Von Snap! Fibula's mummy hubby that she blasted with the murdering music box! What do you mean it was an accident? You're still in love with her, but she thinks you're some other guy. I knew you were a batfish this whole time. You didn't want her to know it was you. Deep down, she knew all along it was you because no one could love her as much as you did? Well, Don, that's beautiful. You have the soul of a poet. Oh, I've got to tell Benita that I was right all along. Uh, do you remember Nita? She's caretaker of Colonel Holler now. Looking at through the eyes wearing the eyelashes, it might be that as well. And in conclusion, we're counting on the citizens of the Nairdwell to help us find our missing bead from our precious abacus of fate. Look under your mushroom caps or in your hollowed out stumps or inside your alarmingly large lizard gills. And, and if you people come to see us here at the cabin, then uh, bring us some more health bars because we're out of them. Our eternal gratitude will be your reward. This is Albert Ghost. I'll be back for more story time soon. We are back with today's newest program, All Things Chewed with Julie the Mule. Julie, before the break, we were discussing options for what our town, Curdle Holler, could do in case the missing bead from our abacus is not found. We were considering... <coughs> Will you make an interesting point about the missing bead, Julie? Let's unpack that. Oh, dear me! <laughs> Recruits, on your feet! And one, two, three, hop! Two, two, three, hop! Three, two, three, hop! I'm undulating with amusement. <laughs> Agent Sty, your tittering is interrupting my calisthenics. What, Agent Squint? You simply must hear this amusing news. Recruits, run 12 furlongs. <laughs> what is this amusing news you speak of? I'm beside myself with the humorous nature of this development. Do you remember those vexing Halloween people? Of course I do. The four-legged one bit me! Yes, well, this is delicious. Apparently, the Halloween people seek a little bead from their precious town abacus. A twenty-sided bead with pictograms. A bead which, as it so happens, I am in possession of. See? Well, why do you have it? Whither did you requisition this bead? If there were beads to be divided amongst our spoils, why did I not get any beads? No, silly Agent Squint. This speed was given to me by my father. He must have bought it from a silly Halloween person when I was a wee lad. Listen to the boring ghost man talk about it on the radio. Finally, Julie, I think your larger metaphysical point about the bead still stands. The missing bead caused a major event that has shifted our world. If it is a beat of fate, then perhaps this adventure has paved the way for an inevitable reunion. <laughs> Echoing Julie's sentiments, I would like to reiterate that anyone with information about this special bead should come find us at the Vaughn Snap Cabin in the Deep Wood. You will be welcomed as friends, and we'll give you some noodles. This special bead! Do you hear, Agent Squint? The Halloweens did cause the event! And I possess the very component that caused the council such a massive disruption. Between our precious indigo Gaia ring and now Father's Bead, I have everything I need to confront the Elsewhere Council and demand all that I deserve. You plan to confront the council and make demands? I thought we were just going to sneak into the Oculo Dome and steal some of those chips I like. No, no, Agent Squint. Father's Bead is faithful indeed. And the time has come for me to make my move! Ha <laughs> ha! Tura tura! Heedle heedle he! Oh, tura indeed! <laughs> okay, dolls, say hello to Benita! She's our town caretaker! Ah! 
Cow lady! Whoa, hey y'all. Cowboy and cowgirl, looking good. Uh, how do you get your hair so tall? I don't actually know. Okay, remember what I said about using the laptop, you two. You say point your finger on the keys, not the screen. That's right. <laughs> Bonita, I'm thrilled that we are now able to video chat via the combined magic of Donald Don Snap's private ether network and Mr. Thorne's tree network. I'm thrilled too, but that was a very weird pop-up to get on my computer. <laughs> I know, Don. We really appreciate what you've done. So, guys, I'm going to scream share. Let's start brainstorming ways to scour the entire ne'er-do-well to find that bead. Halloween! Attend to the door at once! Why, hello, Agent Squint. What brings you here? Yeah, and where's your boyfriend, Agent Stye? He is not my boyfriend, and I mean to inform you all that he has gone mad with power! He has your little bead, and he intends to challenge the Elsewhere Council using your little bead as a bargaining tool! Uh, Benita... Are you hearing all this? Uh, yep. You say he's mad with power, Agent Squint? What makes you come to that conclusion? Because when I challenged his plan, he zapped me with the Nihilizer! And it hurt! Those things do really hurt. Remember, he zapped me too. Right on the caboose. He zapped you on your head? Why were you not reduced to smithereens? Caboose means your bottom. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard! You Halloweens are a nonsensical bunch! Caboose means your head! It's cylindrical! Our heads are more round, though. Guys, all of you, focus! Agent Squint, we thank you for this information. Yeah, that was way helpful of you. Why did you come all this way out here to help us? I care nothing for helping you lot! I simply wanted some of those noodles you mentioned on the broadcast! Fair enough. Okay, new plan. Let's figure out how we're going to get that bead from an evil weirdo. As we begin the first formal meeting of the Get the Bead Back Squad, name pending a cuter name if we can think of it, I would first like to thank our two communications facilitators, Mr. Thorne and Don Von Snap. Okay, now everyone on the call on the Curdle Holler side, please introduce yourselves. I'll go first. I'm Benita, uh, acting caretaker, here with my executive assistant, Fred Fangula. Hey, Rochester Macabre, ever present font of wisdom, here with Minerva Astrolia, technical expert. And dank, rapturous beauty. Hi. I'm Pumpkin, supportive and nurturing friend. Pumpkin, I don't remember inviting you, but yes, you are. And representing law enforcement, I believe we have Terry listening in with her video turned off. Yes, ma'am! On the ne'er dwell side of the call, I have myself, Albert Ghost, plus Buddy and Susan, our doll friends. I'm holding their hands so they don't try to poke y'all's eyes on the computer screen. Chip Clearly, brave adventurer in a courtly tunic. Outside, we have the indispensable but busy at the trough, Julie the Mule. And finally, Agent Twitch, Elsewhere Council. I've been brought up to speed on the new developments, and I stand ready to help you Halloween folks thwart the plans of the rogue Agent Sty. All right. So I've called us all together to discuss our fateful next steps in retrieving the stolen bead. I'm going to share my screen for a brief recap. Uh, Thing number one, our town has been experiencing broken graduations due to the fact that we are missing a bead from our town's abacus of fate. In fact, our broken abacus over time kind of messed up the whole communication system with the Elsewhere Council. Yeah, there's Fred's doing right there with the fancy slide transitions. You can download new ones from the Ether website. We mustn't limit ourselves to zooms and wipes. Thing two. After doing some historical research via a creepy old diary, 
we learned that Belfry Batzinger's cruddy old father, Roostifer, took the bead long ago and sold it to an equally cruddy creep of an elsewhere council agent. And finally, we have now learned that the sacred bead is in the possession of yet another crappy creep, an elsewhere council agent named Agent Stye. He is a crappy creep. And thus, friends of this video chat, I propose that the time has come for us to come together. Our tech experts are currently working on a plan to get a bunch of us to be able to travel through this improvised network and meet up at the Von Snap cabin with you guys in the near twelve. It's going to be a challenge, but ultimately, we are going to find, confront, and take down Agent Stai and get our bead back. And it's all going to go down at the Oculodome. Lily lolly trilla he trilla hi The Halloween people can say goodbye I'm taking their beer to the council stand And I'll use the silly beer to rule the land Well of course my darling sappy My sappiest little friend I can't do it without you What's a man with a plan Without his handy nihilizer Well you are an eager one For patience my pet you and the speed and I must bide our time. But it shall all go down in due time, my dear Nihilizer. At the Oculodome! 